Okay, so the difference between a vector and bitmap, a vector con contains line information, fill information, and this is how we're going to produce our monogram. We're going to use a series of paths and lines to create a monogram. Okay. Whereas a bitmap, it pixelates. So if you want to, if you had to create your monogram with the, in a bitmap, it will start pixelating. So if you want to start using it in a certain sense, and this image is a great example. So on this bottle, you'll notice we've zoomed into a little section over here. Okay, and you'll notice that this section that we've zoomed into, this is the difference between a vector and a bitmap image. So the bitmap would start rust, rasterizing and getting um, pixelated. So a bitmap is, is a JPEG, uh, a TIFF file, those are all um, bitmap type images. So vectors are slightly different. Vector, a PDF file is classed as a vector um, type image in essence. It's written in a vector format. Although a PDF can contain bitmap information as well. And that's what we'll cover later on as well when we're making our monogram. Okay, so the important takeaway is just to understand that you get two types of images. They're written in a very different way. Okay, so if we go back here, they just define. So a vector image is written in points, so it uses maths to produce the image, whereas a JPEG is purely it's 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 derived from a bit, so a map of bits, which then assigns different colors, so it produces an image. And the denser the bitmap, uh, the denser the the more clear the image would as, would appear. Okay, but you'll see you'll end up with this issue where you start pixelating if you want to start using. So these types of graphics you want to try and keep in a vector format so that for a business card you can scale it up very easily to a larger format sheet for example and you're not going to get pixelation. So if you've made your little monogram a bitmap and you've made it as a business, business card and when you want to scale it up to maybe an A4 size um, sheet, for example, it will start pixelating and it won't look clear. You want it to look crisp and maintain this crisp, crispness. Okay. So, the software that I'm going to do it in is just because it's on all the labs. Um, I've got Illustrator as well, but for this exercise, for what we're doing this year, Inkscape is perfect. So, the first thing you need to do in Inkscape is to set up your page size. Okay. So I'm just going to click on this tab at the top here. I'm just also going to switch this on so you can get all the keystrokes as well. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to go and do is find the appropriate size um, working area okay so in this instance you can see because it's a business card you can go and find i would use the european business card because it's a millimeters and it makes a lot more sense to me working in millimeters than in inches okay although bearing in mind because it's a vector image we're not too concerned about um, the actual size because it means that this will scale up quite nicely okay so i'm just going to use a european uh, business card and that should be set up. We're ready to go. And ideally, I want to zoom in to the page and I'm going to work around the center of the page. Okay. But just remember that this, once you've exported this image, it can be scaled up and I'll do a demo at the end. So I've got an example of a monogram that I want to recreate. And you can simply drag and drop the image. Okay. What I need to do is if you hold control shift together, it'll scale it proportionately, and I'm going to move this in the middle of the page as best as I can, scale it up a bit, and you can use your arrow keys to nudge. Okay, that's perfect. So I want to make, I want to replicate this. So it's quite easy. You could scan in or take a photo of your monogram that you created on the sheet, and you can simply trace it. Or if you've used a certain bit of font, and that's what I'll tackle over here, you can use fonts. Um, and you can you can edit those fonts. So I'll show you in this instance. But for now, I'm going to use the path tools. 
Okay, I'm going to show you how the path tools work. Okay, so the first thing I need to do before I go any further is make a layer and make sure that my image is on my layer one. So it means if I switch off my layer one, it controls everything on layer one. So this layer one technically is my underlay, and you can lock it, which means you can't delete it, or which is ideal. Okay, it will sit in the background. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to call this parts. Okay, so this is where I'm going to do all my path work over. The first thing I'm going to try and do is I want to trace the font inside here. So I'm going to start generating a path. Okay, so when you start working with the path, I use this uh, draw Vizier curves and straight lines. Okay, and you can see the shortcut key for that is B. You can use a freehand tool, which is not recommended, but I'll show you the difference very quickly. So this path, if you click once, it will make a straight path, and if you hold down, it will start making some curves. And if you hold down again, so if you hold down the mouse button, you can see it's the left mouse button, you see it can start, it will start making some nice. So you can trace, and then you just literally right click to finish. So what it's done is produced a path which I can then start applying some more information to. Okay. But just in a nutshell, that's that's a path. So let's get rid of that for the time being. The free head, free head one would mean you would have to, but you see it's not very, if you had a stylus or you had a pad, a track pad that you could draw on, it would work pretty well because it, it would be quite nice and smooth. But using a mouse, you don't get great results. Okay. Or you could use, this, uh, this, this pencil, which will kind of create a calligraphy type, but then you need to set up, you need to set up the width, so there's all these different styles that you can set, okay, so you can go and use these width, and you get different presents, so dip pen, marker pen, so you can get all these different types of, and you can see it will make all these weird and wonderful uh, shapes. Okay. okay, so there's different, I tend to use this path tool, it's a lot more accurate. Okay, so I can get rid of, and you'll notice, as you're creating paths, it will start giving you sub-objects in which you can quickly select and work with those sub-objects. But I'll cover that in a minute because that's quite important, because there's tools that we're going to use as part of the path tools that we're going to start getting rid of some of the... So when we create a shape, we're going to start taking things away from each other, subtracting them, cutting parts, cutting parts into pieces so that we can work and cut out some areas. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my, the J and the A very quickly. So I'm just going to use this Vizier Curve tool, and I'm going to simply zoom in a bit. So if you use Control and use the wheel, you can zoom in. I just want to get much of it in. So I'm going to click once to start. And then hold down and I'm going to start tracing this best as I can. What's neat is you can come after this and we can fine tune. Okay, we can come back in and fine tune this later on. But for now, I'm just trying to do this best as I can. So for example, there I didn't hold down. So I'll have to maybe come back and fix that a bit later. But that's fine. I can do that quite easily. There I clicked again. So here I'm going to use the curve tool again. I'll come back and I'll fix that up in a minute. Control zoom out. So this looks pretty straight here. Control. My mistake, you mustn't use control. Control, try and lock it on there. So I'll come back and fix that in a minute. So here I just can try and get this as best as I can. Illustrator works very similar in the way that you create these curves. Okay. So I'm keeping control down the wheel mouse button to zoom. Okay. So there's my first curve. Okay. As you can see, it's not that bad, but Sometimes 
depending on when you're creating a path. So when you create a path, it's going to give you some options. So every path will have these three options associated to it. You can assign a fill. So what it's trying to do is trying to fill up the gap. In this instance, I don't want to see the fill, so I'm going to switch it off. I am indeed going to stroke this curve. I need to stroke it with a type of line, and I need to specify the thickness. So here I'm going to probably work, for the time being, I'm going to make it comma 2. Okay, that's a nice thickness to work with. Here we can control how the joints work, if they're rounded, squared, and how the caps work, so the caps or the ends, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, and there's a certain order in which you can set these, the priorities that you can set them. Okay. Right, but for now, I'm going to leave this as is. I've just changed the, the width of the stroke. So the first thing I want to do is go and look at the stroke without any styles, any fills or any strokes associated to it. So if you go to the View section and go to Display Mode, and you go to um, Outline. So what Outline does is it gives you an outline of the curve that's, that you're working with. Okay. So in order to edit the curve, you've got two options here. So here you can select and transform objects. And if you use this, this other tool beneath it, this tool will enable you to edit these, these nodes now. Okay. All right. So as you select these nodes, it'll allow you to go and edit those nodes. So the first thing I need to kind of illustrate here, we had a, a node that was it was square. Okay, so here's all your node tools. So once you've selected a node and you've activated a path, you'll have all these tools available, and we'll go through them bit by bit, a bit later. But for now, I'm going to concentrate on these for the time being. So I want to change this node to be a curve. Okay, likewise with this node. For example, I can select all these nodes here and make them all. So if I use this tool over here, it'll make them all square again, or I use this tool again, it'll make them all curves. Okay, so what's nice about a curve, when you select the curve, it gives you these control points, which you can manipulate the curvature of this path. Okay? I just want to make sure that they all are, and I can see very quickly that most of them are, are curves, which is perfect. So I'm going to leave it as that. Now that I've changed all of these to curves, the next thing I'm going to do is go back to view and I'm going to quickly switch on my uh, my display mode back to normal. Okay, because I want to see the image. So I need to adjust I need to adjust this a bit. And you can see it's quite easy to get this looking um, quite neat. Okay, so it's just a couple adjustments. Playing with the curves very quickly. And what's neat about the curves, they're trying to blend in with each other. Okay, so it will start making the shape look quite organic. It has a couple of mistakes. Look, I'm gonna I'm not gonna do this as neat as I can. I'm just I'm gonna run through this a bit so we get time to finish the tutorial, but you'll get in a nutshell, you'll get the idea, the principles. Yeah, that's good enough for now. I see this one like this is a problem over here. So this one, this point, I need to make sure that it's a proper curve. That's why I didn't want to work. Uh, come back to there. Extend this out a bit so we can get the curvature working better. That's neat. To, okay, by and large, I think we're almost there. I mean, we're almost there. So here we can. I'll show you an option where you can use existing fonts. You can take fonts and you can convert fonts into parts as well. And we'll tackle that in a minute as well. Okay, great. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't need to do any more to that then. Okay, perfect. Right, so that's my first. That's my J down. Now I just want to concentrate on making the A. So I'm going to start a new curve. Sorry, a new path. Click here, and then I'm going to drag this out. Click here, drag this out. Click here, drag this out. 
click here, drag this out, click here, drag this out, click here, drag this out, and then click here. Done. Okay. Right, so I just need to fine tune some. And you see that, yeah, there's some fine tuning you've got to do from time to time. But I mean, it's just, it's minor little tweaks that you just have to do here very quickly. So like this one, maybe pull this back a little down, pull this back a bit. Now let's give it out. This one, pull this back a little. That's fine. Oh, that will do for now. That's good enough. Yeah, I made a little bit of a boo boo with this one. That's this curve over here. Let's pull this back down a bit. Make it all round. Yeah, oh, I'm happy with that. Oh, that's good enough. Uh, yeah, we've got a slight issue here. So let's just see what's going on here. So let's pull this back more in that direction and pull this back more in that direction. Pull that back a bit more. It's a bit finicky sometimes. Yeah, there we go. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I've got two parts. I'll join them together to be one part in a minute as well. Yeah, I see there's a slight issue with this one. So let's pull that back a fraction. Yeah. Yeah, but you'll get the hang of it. Once you start playing with a couple of these groups, you'll see it will start making sense. Okay. Right, so the last one I need to do is create this one again. So create a path. It does happen, time to time. I find sometimes this software is a bit funny when you're using the, the control Z, so you might have to use this back, back arrow key. Okay, I've noticed that sometimes that it is quite, quite sensitive. Okay, so this one, I might just pull back to there, grab both of those together, and move it. Oops, do. Grab both of those and then just move it like that. Okay, yeah, that will do. That will do. Okay, so let's just have a look at the paths again. So if you if we zoom in to the end of the path, all that this allows you to do is allows you to cap it in a certain way. Okay, so these are your caps. Okay, and then when you've got a sharp corner, for example, if you've got a 90 degree corner, you can make them round, square. Okay, so for this. For this type of, I'm going to make all my joints round, I'll cap it flat for now, and that order I'll leave as is. Okay. All right. Just remember, start saving as you're working. I'm just going to save this on my desktop as test. For now. Okay. All right. So once I'm happy with this, what I can start doing now is exploring these path tools. So what I'll maybe want to do is I want to combine all of these in one path. So it means if I change something on the one, if I change something for the path, they all change simultaneously. So I'm going to select all of these together. So I get a hold down shift and select all these objects. Okay. And if we go into objects, it shows you what objects are currently selected. I'm going to go to path and I'm going to say combine. Okay, now you see it's got rid of all of those, and I'm gonna, I can change this as well. I can rename this, these objects as well, which I like to do. You press F2, and I'm gonna call this. Uh, just give it a name that you can keep track of what it is. Okay. Okay. What's what is nice about doing it this way, and by grouping them in the same, in, in the same. Um, Path, let me just say rename layout. Call this uh, 
Uh, not layer, I want to rename, rename object. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Should rename. All right, strange. Anyway, I'll leave it as is. Okay. All right, so because they're all part of the same path, what I can do now is if I go to the fill and stroke section, if I start changing these settings here, you can see there it will affect it'll change all of them at the same time. So instead of selecting each one and trying to overwrite the settings this way, it gives me more power to go and um, so scale up the, the, the line weight, etc., to make it work well. Okay. So that's my first bit of line work completed. I'm quite happy with the way it looks. Now the next thing I'm looking to do is create the shape. Okay, so quite straightforward and easy. You've got different shapes over here that you can use. I'm going to use this create shape and I'm going to give it six sides. Okay, now you need to determine if it's an inside store or it's going to be an in, in circumscribed. Let me just help. Let me just go to the text here again. Star inserted in regular polygon with one handle, with one handle. Okay, so this is a, okay. Anyway, so when you start drawing the shape, you're going to press control down so that will lock it in an orientation. So without control down, you see that it, it pretty, it's pretty free to float around. But if you use control, it will lock it in a certain aspect. I'm not too worried about getting it 100% for now because I can scale it and move it. I just want to create the shape more or less to start with. Then I'm going to move the shape, okay, where I need it. Then I'm going to use shift control down so it scales proportionately. And I'm just going to try and get this more or less to the, the right size, okay. And then I can zoom in and I can nudge it. Okay, I'm going to explain something about creating the shape. So let me just do that as well while I'm at it. I'm going to go, uh, so here I'm going to hold shift down, uh, sorry, control down, so it locks it proportionately. So here I'm going to try and get that to match there. That's good enough. Okay. So when working with shapes, this shape is strictly not a path, at, it's not a path at the moment. So if I go to my objects, okay, it's, it's, it's a combination of a path, a fill. So what you need to do is, to break the shape, you'll need to go to path and say object to path. And I'm going to show you this. So if you use a circle, for example, and I drop a circle in, okay. So what this does is it keeps it keeps these settings to edit the circle. Okay, so you've got these settings that you can edit the circle or shape, for example. If you want to convert this to a, a true path, you'll need to go path and object to path. And now you see it gives you these groups. These groups. Now you can go and manipulate the shape. Okay, so here you can go and manipulate the shape. And if you use control down or lock it on the X and Y axis, so you can make some neat edits in that respect. So if you hold control down, you drag up. So you can use this to good effect to make some good shapes, for example. Okay, but now, strictly speaking, this is a path. Okay, so what I need to do in this instance now is delete that, delete that, I need to select the whole, okay, it's gone. If you select this object and you go to parts, you'll notice that it's going to give you the same settings. There's no settings to change this path. It's giving me one corner here which will allow me to man manipulate the shape. So I've got to convert this path object to path. Now you see it'll give me grips. To work with. Okay. All right. So now that I've got got this as a path, so what I need to start doing now is start. So let me just switch this off very quickly. I need to start cutting and breaking out some stuff here, so I can create this effect. Okay. So the next trick now we're going to do is so we're going to start looking at these different tools, and I'll quickly run through these tools as well, just to give you an idea of how they work. Okay. So the first thing I need to probably do is use this full of mine, make it quite thick, so I'm going to duplicate this path of the lettering, make it quite thick so that I can use it to cut out, to cut away from the other shape. Okay, so let's do that first. So what I would do in this instance is I'll grab this path and I'm going to duplicate this path. So you can literally control C and you can go to edit and you can paste it, paste in place. Okay, 
So here you see I've got two, two of these. This one I'm going to lock because I need it. I'm going to switch it off. This one I'm going to use, this path I'm going to use now to try and cut out that section. And what's neat, neat is I can kind of just see what's going on here, but I can also select this path and switch that off for the time being. Okay. So those objects I can control. So with this selected, I'm going to go to stroke, pull and stroke, and I'm going to change this width. Sorry, select the path. So I'm going to stroke this so that it kind of works with that width. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, that will work well for me. And once again, I don't need all of these. I can get rid of some of these lines. They're not all necessary. So just by selecting these points, I can delete what's not really required to break away. So I need that maybe. Oh, no, undo. Okay, I'll leave, I'll leave this information for now. Okay, all right, so I don't need that information. So I'll leave this information as is, because now I'm going to cut, cut this away. All right. Once I've scaled this path up to the correct scale, what you need to do then is select the path, and you're going to use this tool, which will create a stroke. So what it does is it gets rid of the central and actually strokes the outline of this object. Okay, so let me just show you what's actually going on. If I go back to view and I go to display, display mode outline. So all it's done is it's created an outline of that fill for me, that path. So I've increased the stroke width, then I've outlined that, that path with a stroke. Okay, so it will stroke the outline of the path. Okay, so what's nice now is it's going to give me um, it will start cutting away from the object below. Okay, so let's quickly just go back to view. Okay, display mode. And I'm just going to go to normal. Okay, and I'm going to switch back on those other objects for the time being. Okay, so it was this path that I want to cut away from. And I accidentally changed that. So let me go back to this one and change that one straight by accident. Just be careful, whatever object you got selected, it'll change. So this, I want to take it back to, let's make it 5. Yeah, 0.5. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, so all I want to do is I want to subtract this shape away from that one. Cut it away in essence. Okay, so let's have a look at what tools it gives you. And I'm going to start a new layer. Just so that we can run through these principles very quickly. Okay, I'm going to pull this test. Okay. Alright, so switch that off, switch that off. Okay. So with my test layer activated, I'm going to create two shapes, a rectangle. Okay. And if you want to assign colors to stuff, you can literally just drag and drop it in. This shape, just remember it will probably need you need to enable the fill. So yes, it will have fill, and you can drag and drop the the colors in and you can drag and drop to the edge so you can get your stroke so that's just quite a neat little um, idea so here I'm creating two shapes okay so this one's full I'm gonna drag a different color over here you can play with the occupancy so you can kind of see through as well okay and I'll change the stroke path as well so I can grab a red color and drag it to the edge here okay all right Okay, so if we go to objects, so in this test layer, let's switch that off, switch that off. Okay, so in my test layer, I've got these two objects. So with objects, you'll need to play, you can see that I'm changing the draw order by using this um, tool over here. Just remember in Illustrator, you right click and you say draw order, center back, bring to front. Okay, this works slightly different. So you're going to select this. This object over here and you're going to use this move up or down or you say move to bottom or move to top okay so move it to bottom okay move to top okay great so now let's go look at these path tools so the first path tool is union so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these shapes holding shift down I'm going to go to path I'm going to say union so what it does is it combines them into one shape so that's quite neat okay so that's the first option Let's go back one. Okay. 
Now we're going to use the difference tool and now just remember which one's above and which one's below. Okay. Select both of these again, go to path, only go to difference. Okay, so what it does is it takes the top object and minuses it away from the bottom object. Okay, so think of it as a cookie cutter. You've got a nice bit of dough and you've got your cookie cutter. You're going to put it over the dough and you're going to cut out your piece. Okay, so this will make up the difference. Okay, so that's great. So I'm going to undo one more time. Let me go through the different tools. Here we're going to use intersection, so select both of these. This is pretty straightforward. You're going to um, path and you're going to go and say intersection and you'll end up with a little bit in the middle. Okay, so that's that one. Undo path. I'm going to go and say um, divide. Okay, what divide does, it's slightly different, so I'll explain that in a minute. So grab both of these. Path, I'm going to go and divide. Okay, so what divide does, it creates two series of objects. So it takes the leftover, but I can get rid of that one, and it could still maintain it. So if you wanted to maybe fill a different color in here quickly to create a graphic, so that kind of thing. So undo. Okay, let's go to path again. And then cut, cut path. So let's do that again. So let's grab this one and this one. Path, and I'm going to say cut path. So this just, all this does is this cuts... Again, it cuts, where those lines go through, it creates a cut. So it'll break this path up. So if I use this option over here, you see it splits the path up into two, two sections. So you can get this section and delete it if you don't need it. So delete that, delete that, it's gone. Okay. So that's that. Uh, path. So here you can combine, select that one and that one. This just makes them one object as well, combine. But what it does with the combine, um, let me just do that again, it should have. Yeah, so it's, it keeps the formatting of the one above and just combines the two shapes. Just remember they still, if we go to the part tool, they're two different, okay, so if you delete this, just combines them, pretty straightforward, okay. And what I've done, this exercise is just a quick, it's a neat way to quickly go through and see what these things do. Okay. If you've got a combined object, so let me just go back. Let me do that again. So when they're combined, if I select these and I go to path and you go break, then what it does is it breaks them into separate components again. Okay. So that, that's all. Okay. The rest, this is pretty, um, let's go path. So here you can say insert. All it does is you can see it shrinks the shape. So you can use this tool to... Shrink it in and out, okay. Part tool, and uh, you can do that. You can go in the opposite way. You can use dynamic offset. So yeah, you can use this tool and it'll offset it by a certain degree. Okay, that's quite neat. And then the last one, which I like, is the linked offset. So what this does, select the object. I'm going to go to object. I'm going to say. Path, I'm going to say linked offset. So what this does is it creates another path inside. Okay. So this is quite neat. So let me show you what's going on here. Let's select the path below. I'm going to say move up. So if I select both of these now, and I want to combine them, so I'm going to go to path. I'm going to say a difference. So what's neat now is I've created a shape now where I've got the difference. Okay. So it's those little tricks. That's all you're doing. To create your monogram, you're just using these tools to create these, these shapes. Okay. All right. So with that done and dusted, I'm going to delete this very quickly. I don't need this layer. I'm going to switch my paths back on. Okay. So I want to just grab this guy over here. I'm going to switch off the fill. There should be no fill. I'm looking for the stroke. And this should be, uh, once again, I've selected the wrong layer, Control z Control z Control z Just remember that. I always make that mistake. Okay. And you can lock the ones that you don't want to change. Okay. So select that one. Make sure that's selected. Let's go to fill. Must be no fill. Okay. Stroke. Yes, I want a thin stroke. And I want this to be, and I'll leave this red for now. I'm going to make this very thin. 
Okay. So all I want to do is I want to subtract this from the one below. Okay, so what I need to do is, and another telltale sign that this is over, you can see this is over that. So all I need to do now is select this one. Let's go to my objects, just make sure that's perfect. The overlining, so I'm going to select both here very quickly. You can use here to select as well, path, I'm going to say difference. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, but now what it's done is it's giving me all this information inside, which is not ideal. Okay, so that's not the right tool to use in this instance. Okay, so maybe in this instance, I'll need to use that split tool. So I need to go to path. I'm going to use the cut tool. Okay. Perfect. So all it's done now, if I just go to uh, select path, it's giving me these little pieces, which I can simply just go and delete. Okay. Delete that. Delete that, uh, delete that, delete that. Okay, correct. Right, so that's exactly what I needed to do. Okay, then I can switch. So I don't need this path anymore. I know I need that path. Oh yeah, this is split it up into three different paths. So you need to select all of these together again. You need to go to path and you need to make this a combined object again. Just means if you want to adjust your stroke in that, it will work better. Now I can switch this back on. And I'm going to switch my image back on. Okay, so you can see very quickly I've managed to create a, a very basic monogram. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to tackle is using fonts. Okay, so using text. So I'm going to put some numbers in here. Right, so I'm pretty happy with everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to lock these so I can't change anything. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some font over here because I'm going to put some numbers in. Okay. Alright, so the next trick I'm going to do is I'm going to use some text. I'm going to drop some text in here and I'm going to start typing 77. Okay, so I'm I'm interested in using these numbers. Okay, then you can go and find the type of font you want to use. So if you just click at the top here and use the arrow keys. Sorry, click here. If you use your arrow keys, it'll quickly jump through. So here you can go and find the font. So if your monogram is using font, I'll explain this in a minute. So I'm going to go and find something that works that works pretty well yeah so i'm going to leave that as is grab this move this down you can use the shift control to scale it to the right scale and i'm going to move this more or less where i want it okay great right now that i've got my fonts in place and it's telling me there's some texture i need to turn this text into a path so i'm going to go to path object to path and what this does is it makes a group so each one of these now it's its own path. So if I select this path or this path over here, let's just see if this group will work. If I go to stroke, and here I can go and bump this up a bit. Now I think I have to go, no, that doesn't work. You have to go to object. So here you will have to select both. So what I'll do first off is I'll make them, so I'm going to go to path, and I'm going to make them um, combined, because then it means I can edit, edit them in one go. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, fill and stroke. I'm just going to play this a bit. Uh, wait a minute. Stroke, yes. Uh, fill, none. Stroke, yep. And I'm going to make this 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.1. Okay, control Z. Yeah, okay, that, that will work well. Okay, and what I could maybe do again is I can I can explode this again. I can convert this into paths and get rid of that inner path for the time being. So maybe let's do let's do that quickly. So let's go to path and just say and break apart. Uh, undo. Let's get rid of the inside. Get rid of the inside. Okay, so that's all I want for now. So here I'm going to up this a bit. Perfect. Okay. okay, I'll explain what's happened as well. These are actually technically in a group, so what you can do is you can ungroup everything. So you can just say ungroup selected. Now there are two individual ones, and you can see they're no longer in a group. Okay, we will use the group and group them back and forth again as we need, as we see fit. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to 
Each one I'm going to uh, use separately for the time being, and then I'll group them later. So this one, for example, you can just do one and copy it across, but I'll show you some effects that we can do. So the first one we're going to do is I'm going to select the, the path. I'm going to go to Fill, and with the Fill section, I'm going to enable, and you see it's got a cross gradient fill. You can select different types here. So these gradients you can select... So we can get different types of fill to work here. Okay, so once you've selected this object and you apply the fill, you can use the fill tool, which allows you to go in a certain direction. Okay, and it also gives you an option with how this works as well, the type of fill that you want to use. So here you can you can you can assign different types. For example, I'm just going to stick to this for the time being. Okay. That's my stroke. I want to go back to my fill, and I want to use this. Uh, use this tool here. Select this guy up here. Sorry, my mistake. Use this tool over here. Okay. So I'm just going to put a bit of a gradient in this. Okay, that will work for me. And do this again. So this one, I'm going to say fill with gradient. Okay. Okay, what I'm also going to do now is just apply this tool again to it. And I'm going to use the fold to go in this direction. Okay. You can change this to different colors, but back that. And I can change the occupancy. Yeah, alright, so that will work for now. I get rid of the image in the background just so I can start seeing what this how this looks. Object. So here I'm just going to switch the images for the time being. Okay, so I've, you can see I've just used some basic tools and I've, I've managed to create quite a, a, a quite an intricate looking monogram. Okay, so once you've created your monogram, ideally what you want to do now is you can get rid of the image in the background. Okay, you don't need this image anymore. Okay, once you've created the monogram and get rid of this layer because you don't need that layer anymore as well. You can select everything, you can make this a group. Hey, I'll just remember this is locked, that's locked. Select all this information and you're going to add it to a group. By adding it to a group, it allows you to then move the group and then scale it. So remember control. Okay, now remember this is the size of your business card, so you can move it in the corner here, control down. Okay, and what is neat, if I keep zooming in, you'll see it never pixelates. You can keep zooming in, it never pixelates. So that's why you want to use this method to create these type of logos, because it means that the, the image is always crisp. And I'm going to export an example of this and show you how, to, how you can use it. So I'm going to make this a bit larger for the time being, and I'll center this in the page. Okay, so alignment, select the object. So here you can align it, uh, you can use the alignment tool. Okay, that's great. Close it as well, don't need that for the timing. Okay, so once I've got my image Line up on my um, sheet. What I'm going to do quickly is just export this. I'm going to save this as a few options. So save as. First thing you need to do is save this as a file. Save as. And you want to save this file as a plain SVG file. I would save the original as well. But I'm going to save this as a, a SVG file. Okay. And now if you want to use this in other bits of software, you can save this as a... Um, Windows Meta file. It's not a great option, but if I just save it as a plain SVG file, I'm just going to call this test one. Okay, I'll save it on my desktop. So if I go to Word or open up some other software, for example, but if you're using PowerPoints or any other digital software that you want to use, 
I know that Google um, Slides doesn't do it, so you might have to convert it into an image, into a different type of image, or you convert it to a PDF. So maybe let me show you that option as well. Um, okay, so let me just explain this in Word, for example. Let me open up Word. Blank document. Pull this onto my desktop. And if I go to uh, desktop, and I drag this in, and what is very neat, you can see I can keep zooming in and it doesn't pixelate. Okay, so this is why you want to use this is why you want to use this method to create these types of images. Okay, so what's neat is you can scale it up and it will never pixelate. Okay. Yes, it will pixelate because I'm, I'm zooming in, but if I keep zooming in, you see there's no pixelation. It's perfect. Yeah. All right. So that's the one option. If you wanted to use it for um, Google Slides, for example, what I might do here is I'll go File. I'll go Save As. You'll need to save this as a PDF. PDF. I'm just going to save this on my desktop as Test 1. Save. So in bed fonts, convert text to paths. Here you can tell it to automatically do that for you. And I'm going to change the resolution quite a bit. Uh, rasterize filter effects. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it as is. Okay, leave everything as is. Okay, let's go to my desktop. So let's open up uh, Google Slides or a document here. So let's go new. Um... Okay, drag to this, the side, and here we can grab this PDF and dump it in. Why not? Let me just say, set image. So let's try an SVG file. Maybe that's the way to go. File save as SVG. Strange. Just double check here. Uh, sorry. Google Slides. SVG. No. SVG. Oh, there we go. Open. Unsupported image type, but it says it will upload it. Very strange. Okay, so it looks like for Google Slides, you'll have to make it quite a large image and then save it as a so in Inkscape, you'll need to go to, um, that's a pity. Okay, we just just um, maybe increase the sheet size so it's quite big and then export it that way. If you're going to use this in Google Slides, okay. Let me just try something else, Google Photos. Maybe Google Photos will, so let's just open up Google Photos quickly. Uh, well, I want to open up a new tab. Very strange. Okay, let's go to Google Photos, Photos, let's drag and drop that SVG file here. Uh, let's put this on my desktop. Let's just grab this SVG file from my desktop. Uh, let's grab this one here, drag and drop it in. Okay, it's saying it's working. Let's see if that works. No. Let's try the other one. No. Okay. So that doesn't seem to work. Okay. I know that a Windows Metal file will work, but it's not a great format. So let's try test one. Let's try this one and see if this will work. No. Okay. All right. So we'll have to, from if you want to use this in Google Slides, File, save as, okay, 
there is no option. Let's, let's change it to an optimized test one, say. Replace. Nah, okay. All right, so you'll have to save it as a JPEG. Okay, so if you go to File, and you go to Export, Export PNG. So here you export as a PNG file, and just make sure that you, you change your resolution quite high. Make your resolution 300 DPI. Okay, okay but in essence, this works great for um, Illustrator, all those other, and you can save it and use it on your drawings. Okay. Okay, and it's in a format that will never pixelate. So if you up if you up your sheet size, so if you went over here and you change this to an A1 sheet, for example, an A4, just go to A4 very quickly. A3. You can see on the sheet it's ready. Okay. But what is neat is if you're setting up your sheets in here the whole time, you can simply just drag this from your and this is what I like. You drag and drop this in here. And you see it doesn't pixelate. So here you can use this SVG file in this project time and time again. Okay, so this is your signature, your symbol, your, your monogram that you use for your sheets. Okay. Alright, and this will work in Illustrator and Photoshop, etc. Okay.